and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, some of y'all are going to be, well, why did you do that? And I'm going to be like, because I got it like that. I do whatever I want. And you're going to be like, but dude, you ain't got to be like that. And I'm be like, I got to be whatever I want to be. And I'm going to be whatever I want to be. And I'm going to do whatever I want to do. So if you don't like that, you know what you can do. You know where you can go. Okay. There are a bunch of kites out there. You know what to do with it, right? Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies and gents, I want to tell you, this is going to be really short. This is Bit Shoot. There is a video up here. Okay. Your power under the Federal Reserve Act. This video is not going to be published on YouTube. Not because it has something that YouTube is going to prevent it from being published for. No, pay attention. It's being processed right now. It'll be up shortly. Pay attention. The video is being processed right now. The video talks about the Federal Reserve Act. Look at the description. These descriptions are not pre-written descriptions. These descriptions are at the moment that the video is being done. So it's going to give you the exact information that the video is about. Read the descriptions. Bit shoot. The videos that are done on this shoot will have that. The description will tell you exactly what the video is about. Okay? Unlike the YouTube videos, I don't have time to do a description for every YouTube video. Psst, man, somebody just told me I've been going crazy this month with videos on YouTube. It ain't the first time. So I do too many for me to be focused. That's why you don't see me putting, if I was to put all of that effort into making sure the production was right and the camera angles were corrected, man, Lord have mercy, I would not do that to myself. And I wouldn't do it to y'all. If you want to find out when videos are being put up here on BitChute, I'm sorry, y'all. I hate to do this to y'all, but I got to tell y'all, y'all will have to subscribe to this one because I don't advertise BitChute and I don't advertise YouTube. Okay, I'm only doing this video just to let you guys know that this is up, but I'm not going to do this every time. It's just the information. Why don't you just put the video on YouTube? Because guess what? I told the people on BitChute because they came here that this was for them. So you got to go there to get it. All right. All right. That's what I thought. That's what I talked about at the very beginning of the video, doing what I do and how I do want to do when I feel like doing it and how what you can go do with them kites. Okay. Ask that question to me again. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you YouTubers, I got something I wanted to explain anyway. I had a person contact me and this video will be just a little bit longer than I anticipated. But I had a, a person contact me and I told you guys about him earlier. And he contacted me again. I didn't read the last comment because I don't have time. I, when you tell people you don't have time and they keep wanting to communicate, Lord have mercy. So they people want to get in touch with me because they want to have those one-on-ones. They want to bounce ideas off. That I'm not here for that. I'm not your. I am not your Huckleberry. Okay. I'm not here for that. I'm not for here for you to verify your processes. I don't care if you went to somebody's secure party creditors program. I don't care about that. I do not teach secure party creditors. Yes, I know about the UCC. Yes, I know about the UCC one, the UCC financing one statement, the UCC three. Okay, UCC eleven, UCC nine. I know about all of that junk. I don't do that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care for the UCC anymore. Well, your organization, yes, they do, but I'm not the organization. You're more. I mean, excuse me. <sighs> Apologize, composure. I got something I want to show you guys. We talked about it earlier today. We're going to go to the King James Version. I, I, I don't need to do this, but I'm going to go to the King James Version. We're going to talk about three different things. Hold on now so y'all can see. This is the King James Version. This is, pay attention, verse 1 of Revelation of St. John the Divine. Now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, St. John the Divine? St. John was never the Divine. Come on now. The Divine was always one, God. But don't worry about it. Now, Pay attention to this because this is important. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to sue, show unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant. See, he can't be divine. John. Now, let's go down to verse number five. And from Jesus Christ, the man before the title. That's why you'll see the title preceding the man showing the level of the understanding. So you'll, when you see Christ Jesus and Jesus Christ in the Bible, there's a reason for it being put in each direction. It's a capacity thing. So from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness 
the first begotten or born of the dead. Excuse me. How could God ever be born of the dead? Pay attention. Whew. Makes no sense to me either. But there are a lot of people out there who believe that Jesus is God. One person told me that Jesus sent his only begotten son to the earth. Hold on. Let's let's talk about that because that, whew, man, that, it, it, you talk about flooring. Uh, floored in the beginning, pay attention, was the word. Now, if you don't understand, this is talking about Genesis. In the beginning. You don't believe that this is talking about Genesis? Let me put, prove it to you. In the beginning. Okay? Lord have mercy. People, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. There's a reason why John starts it off with, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Pay attention. He says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. I want you to pay attention to verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. That's the word being with God. So God created man in his own image. But he said, let us make man in our image. So let's find out what Jesus had to say about this. Because somebody said Jesus sent his only begotten son to the earth. So we're going to John the 17th chapter. Now John the 17th chapter is important. Why is John the 17th chapter is important? Because this is the chapter where Jesus says he and his father are something unique. So let's go to where it says, you know, where Jesus and his father, you know, they speak about being unique. <sighs> that they are, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. And that they also may be one in us, in us, meaning in union. Shh, don't tell nobody. That the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, and that they may be made perfect and one, and that the world may know that you, thou, hast sent me, and hast loved me as thou, uh, excuse me, hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Pay attention, people. They use that to say that, Jesus and God are the same. Okay, fine. Let's say that that's what it means. Jesus and God are the same. Where's the Holy Spirit? Where, where's the Holy Spirit? Let me... You, you want to know where the Holy Spirit is? Okay, we're going to Matthew. It's the fourth chapter. No, I, I know. You, but you're going all over the Bible. Because that's what the Bible's designed for. When Jesus was being tempted by the devil, did he not hop all over the Bible? Go back and read it. Don't take my word for it. See? Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And then he said, Jesus said unto him, it is written. And he reads from one part of the Bible. Then he says up here, for it is written. And he reads from another part of the Bible. So don't get mad at me if I'm following his direction. If I'm imitating him. Okay? Pay attention. Now we need to worry about this. Jesus saying, repent for the kingdom of the heavens is at hand. And then he goes to John. And what does Jesus say? About being baptized. This is John saying, I indeed baptized you in water unto repentance, but he that is coming after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear or untie. He shall baptize you with Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit and with fire, baptism of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, none of what others would say. Jesus said, answered to him, suffer it not to be so for now. In other words, let it be this way for now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill what is all that is righteous. In other words, it is necessary for us to fulfill all that is righteous. Then he suffered him, or he stopped preventing him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight away, or straight away, a straight way, excuse me, out of the water. Ladies and gentlemen, it's complete immersion. Not no sprinkling in the water, no forehead. 
And lo, the heavens were open to him. He now remembered his past. While he was on earth, he did not have any recollection of his heavenly life. That's why you didn't hear him speaking that way prior to this. The only conversation you hear of Jesus prior to this conversation is when he was 12 years old. But now, after baptism, the heavens are opened up to him. He now remembers where he was before. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Uh-oh, God's Spirit. Jesus is in the water. Pay attention, he's in the water. Now God's Spirit is descending like a dove. But where is God? Let's find out where God is. Hold on, because they, they, they're supposed to be a trinity, right? And lo, a voice from heaven. Wait, so God is in the heavens. The Holy Spirit is coming down out of the heavens, and Jesus is in the water. So where in the world is there an explanation in the Bible explaining how this was made to happen? Now remember, the Bible was written for man so that we can understand. So where is it written in the Bible showing how these three separated from each other and then they morphosized and came back together like one to twin powers? I'm not joking. I'm being very serious. People want to say that they are a trinity, but the scriptures don't say that. Let me ask you a question. It says, and the tempter came to him and he said, if thou art a son of God, well, shouldn't Satan have known that he was God's son? So why does he ask the question? Why does he question that? Oh, by the way, <laughs> let me make sure you understand something so that y'all get it. Because again, there are a lot of people out there going to dislike me. I don't care for pointing this stuff out because all I'm doing is showing you what the scriptures say. We can go to Job. Okay, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon him himself, upon himself, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of God. Now, before we go there, I need you guys to understand something about Satan. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing, or doesn't he fear you for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hand and his substance has increased in the land. But for put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to the face. You'll go back and you'll find out that Satan not once showed any disrespect to God during this conversation that's the first conversation then we go to the second chapter and we have the second conversation but you'll see that he at no time shows any disrespect so let me ask you a question how can satan tempt god no 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 hold on what is he going to tempt him with well what's he going to tempt god with no 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 y'all y'all need to understand where i'm coming from because as we got here, Jesus was tempted by the devil. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So how in the world could Satan tempt Jesus and Jesus be God and he not be tempting God? I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Again, the belief that people have that Jesus is God is one through tradition that they're told over and over and over again. It's repetition. Nobody ever explains how in the world they could be three in one, a triune God. Nobody explains to them that the triune God comes from Nimrod, where Nimrod was a mighty hunter. He was a king and he was a warrior. Three in one. And his mother, you see the baby Mary holding the baby Jesus. Well, that was Nimrod's mother holding him. Now, what you didn't know about Nimrod the first king documented on the earth, a black person. Yes, the black. The first king was black. But that doesn't show nothing about his character because Nimrod and his mother, the Madonna, were married. That's right. Nimrod married his own mother. Okay. So when you see the virgin holding the baby in the statues, that's Nimrod and his mother. That's not Mary and Jesus. I know I know what you're going to tell me. Oh, no, that's not what it, and it, it You don't understand where it comes from, and that's the problem. You don't understand how they indoctrinated and incorporated that junk into 
Christianity. It was called the Great Apostasy. Okay, watch this. Uh, let's see. I, I don't know if it's going to give it to me, but we got to do it this way. <sighs> the, uh-oh, didn't T-H-E-G-R. Let's do that right there. I don't know how to spell apostasy, and I don't know if it's going to give it to me. Give me one second. I'm, I'm, hey, I, it's late at night. I've been up behind this computer for 12 hours. Y'all leave me alone. I know it's in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. I do know that. Uh, yeah, is it in Timothy? My headset is telling me the battery is low. No, that's not. No, these are study notes. Okay, the great apostasy would contribute to a spread of those undesirable characteristics. Oh, it's 2 Thessalonians. Okay. Let's see. No, I think it's here. I think here he talks about the great apostasy. But that's Timothy. That's not Thessalonians. That's Timothy. So let's go to, I know it's Thessalonians or Thessalonica. Uh, let's see. Foretold apostasy, the man of lawlessness will be revealed as prophesied. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 2, 12. Let no one lead you astray in any way, because it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And the man of lawlessness gets revealed, the son of destruction. He stands in opposition and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he sits down on the temple of God, publicly showing himself to be a God. Do you not remember when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, as the Apostle Paul talking. Ladies and gentlemen, it was prophesied that there would be a great apostasy, a dividing, a stepping away from the truth. That's why it was called the Dark Ages. That's when all of this indoctrination of all these foreign beliefs were thrown into Christianity. Why do you think people believe in hellfire when the Bible doesn't teach you, teach us about a hellfire? Just think about it. Why do you think people believe in baby angels? Cupid, throw back your bow. And then they celebrate things like Easter and Valentine's Day and Halloween. Go ahead. Do yourself a favor. Go back and read the scriptures. We have 33 years of Jesus' life. See if he ever celebrated Christmas. No, no, no. Don't take my word for it. Go and read it. See if he ever celebrated Halloween. No, don't take my word for it. Go and read it. See if he ever celebrated Thanksgiving, New Year's. Now, he did celebrate one day. Nobody paid attention to it, but he did. He kept going to Jerusalem on this particular day every single year. As a matter of fact, he even died on the day that he celebrated. How I long, he said. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I gotta shut that off, I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the festival. It's called the Festival of the Unflamented Bread or the Unleavened Bread. Now, the festival of the unflamented bread, which is called Passover, was getting near. And the chief priests and the scribes were looking for an effective way to get rid of him because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, the one called Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. And he went off and talked to the chief priests and the temple captains about how to betray him to them. And they were delighted at this and agreed to give him silver money because why? It was prophesied. All you got to do is click on the M, and it'll show you the prophecy. Then I said to them, if it seems good to you, give me my wages. But if not, withhold them. And they paid my wages 30 pieces of silver. Taken from the book of Zechariah, the 11th chapter, verse 12. Ta-da. Now, mind you, I said Jesus only celebrated one day. Let's make sure. The day of the unleavened bread had arrived on which the Passover sacrifice must be offered. Jesus said to Peter and John, get the Passover ready for us to eat. Because why? That's the day that he celebrated. Then they, when they got to the house, the teacher said to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Why do you think they have the picture 
of the Last Supper. Now, pay, pay attention. <laughs> I'm sorry. All of my life, people have looked at that picture as if it was taken at the actual event. People, Michelangelo wasn't even alive then, so he couldn't have taken a picture of Jesus at the meeting of Passover. I'm sorry. It, it's hilarious that people thought that that was an actual image of the actual supper. Okay, that's an artist's rendition and uh, the way everything was set up. We don't even know if that's the way it was set up. Lord have mercy. But hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Pay attention. So when the hour came, he reclined at the table along with the apostles. And he said to them, I have greatly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And except in a cup, he said thanks and gave it to them and passed it along and blah, blah, blah. Okay. He said, keep doing this in remembrance of me. That's the only holiday we've been commanded to. S oh, no, no. Pay attention. This is a command. This is not a request. This is a command. Keep doing this in remembrance of me. He didn't ask us to celebrate any other day. It's the only day documented in the scriptures that Jesus celebrated. Now, he did recognize the other two festivals, the two major festivals during the year. Festival of the Booths. He recognized those festivals. He went to Jerusalem on those days. But this is the main one. That's why he says how I long to have this Passover with you before I suffer. Not my words. He says, I greatly desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. This was his desire to eat this one because he was to die that night, the very same night. And he wanted to do that with the disciples present. That's what he had been waiting for. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand. First of all, Satan cannot tempt God with anything. There's nothing he could offer him, so that falls short. Okay? That falls very short. The second thing, God cannot die, yet Jesus died. Here's the other thing that you all need to pay attention. We're going to go back to one more. This is the last one, uh, because we ain't got to tell y'all, show y'all everything. But we're going to go to John. We're going to go back to the 17th chapter, because it's, it's two more things. 17th chapter of John. Got to, got to show y'all this, because it's necessary. This is the first, chap uh, the first verse of 17th chapter. Jesus spoke these things, and raising his eyes to the heaven, because remember, that's where God was when he was baptized, so he might as well still be there when he's sitting up there praying to him on the very same night. 17 chapters of very same night, people, of the Passover. Okay? Notice what he says. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, so that your son may glorify you. Just as you have given him authority over all flesh, you have given him authority. But if he was God, why would he need to give him authority if he's God? Pay attention. I didn't say this. The scripture said it. So that he may give everlasting life to all of those whom you have given to him. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I have glorified you on the earth and have finished the work you've given me to do. So now, Father, glorify me. Whoa! Hold on. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory that I had alongside you before the world was. You mean back in Genesis in the beginning? When he says, let us make man in our image, because man is the world he's talking about, he's not talking about the earth. Whenever the Bible mentions world, it is speaking about mankind. It is not speaking about the planet. That's why it's called the world of mankind. You want to prove it to yourself? Look at verse number six. I have made your name manifest to the men you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have observed your word. Okay, 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 you see what I'm saying? All right, so now that we have that, now that we have that, we got one more thing to do. We're going to go to the last verse of chapter 17. I have made your name known to them and will make it known 
so that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in union with them. Now this one says in union with. Okay? There's a song. I believe in you and me. Maybe I'm a fool to feel the way I do. I would be the fool forever. He says, I'll play the fool forever. Just to be with you forever. I believe in miracles. I believe. Do you guys know the song? You and me? You and I? Done by two people, but Larry Graham's version, I love tremendously. But he was talking about being in union with somebody. Jesus said that they were greatly mistaken when it came to the scribes and the Pharisees. Why were they greatly mistaken? He says, because he's a God of the living, not of the dead. But why is this important to you guys right now with this conversation? Because the conversation was preceded by Jesus saying, he created man and woman. That's why a man is to leave his father and his mother and to stick to his wife and the two are to become one flesh. That's why it's important. Because he never changed that understanding about a husband and a wife becoming one flesh. So when he says he and his father were one, he was speaking that they were one unit, that they spoke as one, that, A, um, my former fiancé and my soon-to-be wife will both and have always know that with me, we make decisions together, but I'm the final say-so. Not that I'm king, god, or ruler, but I'm the head of the house. Not because I'm a male chauvinist, but I am the head of the house according to the principle that was established by Jesus and his father. Not the dominant one, but the Bible does speak of the woman as being the weaker vessel. Why is she weak? Is she weaker mentally? No. She's weaker physically. What do you mean she's weaker physically? Because men were designed different than women. Sorry. I know there are some people out there that will teach different, but they don't understand. I'm not talking about the ones who's had their genes manipulated. And altered okay I'm not talking about the ones who are going out there and having operations and then participating in sports against women or against men you see here's the thing I want you all to understand right now we have these individuals who carry the male genome wanting to play in women's sports have you seen any woman who carries the female genome wanting to play in men's sports against men no 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 we've had women going to men's sports as women, but we've never had a individual who is trans going to men's sport as a woman. I mean, excuse me, as a man, excuse me. Let me correct that, as a man. Go ahead, take a look in all the sports. Haven't seen it, and you won't, Not no time soon. Look, it is a fact that there are some strong women out there. It is a fact that there are some women who have some athleticism. But that's not what the scripture is talking about. The scripture is not talking about this modern day of athleticism. Okay? It's not talking about that. Go back and look at ancient times and look at the men who worked in the field. Even though the women worked in the field and helped the men, the blunt of the work done by men, that was done by men. They were considered the stronger vessel. Women were considered the weaker vessel. Why? Because of stamina. doesn't mean that all women are weak. It doesn't mean that all men are strong. Pay attention. We're talking about on average. We're not talking about politically correctness. But I detract. The gentleman made a comment about Jesus begotting Jesus. He says Jesus sent his only begotten son to the earth. Where is that in scripture, as I, I asked him? Now, of course, he can't find it because I know he can't find it because the scripture doesn't say Jesus sent his only begotten son to the earth. Everybody knows John 3.16. Hold on, let's go there. Because I know John 3.16 does not say anything about Jesus. Hold on, went backwards, need to go forward. John 
doesn't say anything about Jesus sending his only begotten to the earth. It says, for God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Now, let's say Jesus is speaking about Jesus. Jesus loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. So that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed, but have everlasting life. Do you know how confusing that would be to mankind? Okay. Do you know how confusing that would be? Well, let's go. We got one more. Verse number 13. Moreover, no man has ascended unto heaven, but the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those people who believe that everybody goes to heaven, all the good people and all that, he said that Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them, Enoch, all of them, he says none of them went to heaven. No man has ascended into heaven, but the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. So where are all of those people who died? Well, that's easy. That's chapter 5. Hold on. We're going to go to chapter 6 to get back to chapter 5 because we're going to verse 26 and 27 and 28. 26, we just talked about that this week. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted also to the Son to have life in himself. Why? We're going to, well, and he has given him authority to do judging because the, he is the Son of Man. So we know this is talking about Jesus, but the Father has granted the Son to have life in himself. It would be impossible if they were the same person for that to happen because it would be a redundancy. It would be an oxymoron. So Jesus says, as far as whether or not the Father can grant him to have life, this is what he's talking about not marveling at. He says, do not marvel or be amazed at this. The hour is coming in which all of those in the memorial tombs will hear his voice, the Son of Man, and come out. Those who did good things to a resurrection of life. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and so forth. And those who practice vile things for resurrection of judgment. Not the wicked, the ones who are unrighteous is what the scriptures say. But pay attention to what's going on here. The resurrection to life, that is the life he's talking about. He's given him the ability to restore life. Now, if you don't believe me, when I go here to, let's see if it has it. If it doesn't, it's going to, no, nope, we got to go there. John 11, 11, 11. I've had several people who told him to read this. It says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. We're not going to read it. I'm going to tell you to read it. If you don't believe me about what happens to a person when they die, Okay, pay attention. It lets us know right here in verse number one to tell you that this chapter in the Bible is here for one reason and one reason only. It says Lazarus was sick. Verse number five says Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. But when he heard that he was sick, he actually remained where he was for two more days. He didn't move, but he loved Lazarus. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This is important for you to understand this. Let's find out how far Jesus was away in a moment. But we need to read verse number four, because verse number four is the most important. But when Jesus heard it, he said, The sickness is not meant to end in death. Pay attention. He's already talking about death, and Lazarus is only sick. He says, But it is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Pay attention. Life is what it was talking about. So hold on now. Need y'all to understand what's going on. So that y'all can see what's going on. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, just lately the Judeans were seeking to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus said to them, there are 12 hours of daylight. Are there not? If one walks in a day, he does not stumble against anything because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in a night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. In other words, as long as I'm with you, and you know that prophecy has prophesied about me, you guys don't have nothing to fear about about anybody doing any damage. Have some faith. That's what he's saying. After he said these things, he added, Lazarus, our friend, has fallen asleep. And I'm traveling there to awaken him. Remember, 
they'll hear his voice, come out! And they'll come out. Those who did good things to a resurrection of life, those who practiced vile things to a resurrection of judgment. And the disciples said to him, Lord, if he is sleeping, he'll get well. Jesus, however, had spoken about his death, but they imagined that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Ain't that something? Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus has died. Now that's interesting, ain't it? Then he says, I rejoice for your sake, not for mine, that I was not there. But so that you believe, let us go to him. Now, I need y'all to pay attention because y'all need to understand what's going on here because many of y'all are going to look at this in a different light. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles. Ladies and gentlemen, he was only two miles away. And this was a man he loved, Lazarus. He loved, as a matter of fact, the scriptures show that Jesus cried twice over Lazarus' death. Cried twice. So he says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who exercises faith in me, even though he dies, will come to life. Ain't that something? That's what John 11 chapter is there for. So, I encourage all of you, those of you who stayed around this long, 36 minutes of this video, I encourage you, go and read John 11 chapter. See for yourself that that chapter is there to show you that there is a promise of life. Right now, nobody has life. This is not life. We're not living. This is misery. This is suffering. Well, he and his father are promising to end all suffering. Revelation, the 24th chapter, verse 1 through 4. He's promising to end all suffering. Verse 5 shows you that it's permanent when he ends it because he gives his guarantee. So, it's not just the law that he allows me to understand. It is his word. I don't understand his word because somebody taught me. I understand his word because I've studied his word. Now, I will tell you this, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, when I was, and I've told this story many times, 15 years old. I stopped going to the Kingdom Hall. I asked all of my friends in school about their religion. That's, I spent my entire ninth grade year the, from December, pay attention, to June, asking all of my friends about their religion. My father died July 4th. No, he died July 5th. Sorry, I apologize. He died July 5th, 1983. Okay, I spent from December to July, or well, June, asking my friends, all of them, in school, anybody who I was friends with, they had me asking them questions about their religion and what they believed. Because I was looking for one that taught the truth about the Bible. And although many of their beliefs were similar, none of them came close. And I'm listening to them, and they're all trying to explain, and none of them could explain about their beliefs. Their beliefs were solid, though. They, they, they had it. They, they were stuck. They were, but when I would show them what the scriptures say, there was no further conversation. And I couldn't understand that. I'm thinking, because of how I grew up, I'm thinking everybody should have known what the Bible said. If you're going to believe in God, shouldn't you know what his word says? That's what I thought. And it wasn't that way. I listened to them, I saw what they believed, I saw their lifestyles, and I chose, no, that's not what I wanted. I choose to serve Jehovah, not because somebody taught me to serve Jehovah, no. I choose to serve Jehovah because somebody introduced him to me, and I've been serving him ever since. Even when I made mistakes, I never forgot my God, and never will. So, in a nutshell, three years old, my mother and father showed me Jehovah's name. They didn't force Jehovah on me. They just told me who Jehovah was, the greatest personage in the entire universe. The most powerful person ever is what my father said. And with Jehovah as my friend, nobody would mess with me. Well, guess what, people? I've been telling people that for years. Anybody who has messed with me has always had to suffer a consequence. Why? Because that's his rule, not mine. He says he will not be mocked. Whatever a person is sowing, this they will reap. 
Well, if he is my friend, how in the world could anybody harm me and not go unscathed? I've always had that. Since I was three years old, I've had that understanding. That is my faith. Nobody taught that to me. My mother and father didn't instill that in me. All they had to do was let me know how powerful he was and how much of a friend he could become. And he's become my friend. And I have become his. I hope that makes sense. I take this time only to say this because some of you, there are those of you who do listen to the videos and you've asked me to talk about things like this. The other people don't know because I don't talk about it that often. But because you've asked me to talk about subjects like this, I do it from time to time. So this is for you, not for everyone else. This is for those specific people who's asked for information such as this. Now, here's the other thing. If you have a belief that is contrary to what I just showed you, then you have a problem. Why? Because you just told yourself that your beliefs are not in line with Scripture. And if your beliefs are not in line with Scripture, then that means that you need to reevaluate your beliefs. Not me. I don't need to reevaluate mine because I'm showing you from Scripture. I didn't just show you one scripture. I showed you several, several scriptures. Several is several and scriptures, the, yeah. Anyway, but I've shown you several scriptures all agreeing with each other. I couldn't make this up, but I promise you with all of my heart, he has allowed me to see these last days, what's about to happen. And I'm sorry for many of you. Truly. You don't believe me. Look at what's going on in Israel. If you have no clue, I've already told people that was coming since 2013. Nothing. I told people October 7th, nothing will ever be the same. Why? Because the nations and these stupid leaders who are controlling everything just showed us what they are capable of, that they don't care about the people. They don't care about you, your families, your mother, your father, your sister, your uncle, your cousin, your niece, your nephew. They don't care. They don't mind if 100,000 dies because of their plans, because of the stupid things that they're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, they're about to take this to a whole nother level, and y'all can't see it. I know there are people on YouTube and all these other places talking about doomsday. They don't even know half the story. Now, I told you, I saw the pandemic before it even happened, but that wasn't the pandemic I saw. That junk that we just went through, that wasn't what I saw. What I saw was 100,000 times worse. And how can you imagine something other than what we just went through being 100,000 times worse? I promise you, 100,000 times worse. Guaranteed. Now, you don't believe me, this is the last thing. I said the other one was the last thing, but this is the last thing I'm going to show you. Give me a second. No, we can go to Mark, because it's in both, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We can go to Mark, and we can go to Mark, I believe it's Mark 11, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't been to Mark. I, if I had my Bible in my hand, I'd be able to go right there, but you can't go right there. Give me one second. Uh, give me one second. Nope, not 11, it's 13. And yeah, I could see myself mixing it up, but it is 13. Now, this is the part that y'all need to pay attention to. This was Jesus sitting on the Mount of Ilos with the temple in view. And there was Peter, John, and James, and Andrew came to him privately saying, Hey, can you tell us when these things are going to happen, these, this conclusion of this world that we're living in? And Jesus began to say to them, Look out that nobody misleads you, because there are going to be many people coming on the basis of his name saying, I am a Christian. You know, I, I'm the Christ, or I am an apostle of the Christ, or I am this, or I am that associated with the Christ. He says, and will mislead many. But the part that you need to focus on, he says, you're going to hear of wars and reports of wars and rumors of wars, and do not be alarmed. These things must take place, but the end is not yet. When does the end begin? Because there's a beginning. When nations rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and earthquakes in one place after another, and food shortages all happening at the same time. 
these are the beginning of pains of distress or the time of the end. So the end had a beginning. When the nations rose against each other and kingdoms against each other, that's called World War One. That's why they named it World War One. It had never happened before. That's why it was called number one. Then they had World War Two. But then at that time, remember, there was also a lot of great earthquakes since then. And then there was a lot of food shortages. And the book of Luke speaks as to pestilences. All that had happened since World War I, 1914. Don't believe me? Go back and do your research. Don't take my word for it. But we have, I love this part right here. He says, you'll be hated by people, by all people, and I count of my name, but the one who has endured to the end will be saved. All you got to do is endure, people. However, pay attention. We're going to go right here because I just had somebody tell me that they just had a newborn child yesterday, the 23rd of December. They just had a newborn child. Pay attention. Woe to the pregnant woman or those nursing a babe in those days. I told them that they needed to not give up, that there was going to be difficult times coming. Woe to the pregnant woman and those nursing a babe in those days. Ladies and gentlemen, difficult times. <sighs> Keep praying that it may not occur in the winter time when you're going through difficult times. Not in the winter time as far as seasons, but winter time as far as that's when people tend to be going through the worst. Very few jobs, very few income coming in that time going through the worst keep praying that it doesn't happen when you're going through a whole lot of junk for those days will be days of tribulation such as not occurred from the beginning of the creation that god created until that time and will not occur again in fact unless jehovah had cut short the days no flesh would be saved but on account of the chosen ones the saints the elect the elite whom he has chosen, he has cut short the days. Ladies and gentlemen, this tribulation that he's talking about, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're heading to. It's not going to be pleasant. And I spend every waking hour of my day talking to my God about that time because it is the thing that's keeping me at a standstill because of what I've seen. And he only showed it to me because I asked him to. I asked him to let me see what was to affect me in a bad way beforehand. And he has done that. Every single time the system has come after me to take away my freedom, I knew about it beforehand. Could have evaded it, could have avoided it, could have spoken out against it. But you can't stop history. Now, if you don't understand what I mean, I'm going to take a couple of seconds to explain and I'm going to get off of this particular video because I'm tired. You can't stop history because I had already seen it. That means it's nothing I could have done to prevent it from happening because it had already been foretold. It had already been shown. In other words, how can I change that which I was shown to be fact? Just like how can you guys change the fact that there's going to be a tribulation? or that there's going to be problems for those who have babies during these days. There are going to be individuals who are going to want to stay in the field and return to pick up their outer garment. They're going to be materialistic. They're going to be wanting to be holding on to those things. If you look at that movie, uh, No Friend Left Behind or World Left Behind or whatever that dumb movie is called, you'll see that that's the problem that most people were having. They had to leave everything behind. They had to forget everything. So there was a lot of symbolism in that movie. And if you didn't know, it was produced by the Obamas. Now, I don't have anything bad to say about the Obamas like everybody else. I, I don't have anything bad to say about the Obamas. I, I, I don't care about Barack's life. I don't care about his... I think that he is a very interesting man. And I would love to have a conversation with Barack. Just a conversation. Do you know how some people out there, oh, I would like to talk to Ian. You know, well, that's me. I'd love to have a conversation with Barack. Not because he was the president of the United States. Not at all. I'd love to have a conversation with him because of his level of intelligence. Barack is not stupid. And a lot of you guys, 
<laughs> no, no, I know he did say something about 54 states of the United States, but then I also know that he wasn't just talking about the states of the United States, and I understood that the moment it was said. So, but I do say, he didn't say stupid things. You don't hear too many times, but you can catch Biden, you can catch Bush, you can catch the Bush before him, you can even, well, you couldn't really catch Bill Clinton saying anything stupid, and I'm sorry, but it's, it's the truth, but you can catch Bill doing stupid things, but you couldn't catch him saying anything stupid because Bill, out of all the presidents we've had all the way back to Lyndon Johnson, and I have to go all the way back to Lyndon Johnson, Bill Clinton was, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and Lyndon Johnson were probably the smartest presidents they've had in this country in the last 60 years. Quite literally. And I, I hate saying that. I didn't know much about Lyndon Johnson. In my opinion, he was a coward. I think the same thing about Obama. And I think the same thing about Clinton. There are so many things they could have done to make life better for Americans if their position was truly a position, and they didn't do it. And thus, that's cowardice to me. Look, the Bible says if a person knows how to do what is right and does not do it, it's a sin for him. Well, they know what is right, and they know what is wrong. And when they don't do it, when a Congress member doesn't do it, then they're sinning. Let them sin, because there's always a consequence for sin. I don't feel sorry for a single one of them for receiving the consequences of their actions. Hey, I have to suffer the consequences of my actions, so I don't wish that anybody suffer the consequences, but a person keeps on sinning. You can sin once and you can be forgiven. You can sin twice and possibly there's forgiveness, but... You keep doing the same thing over and over again. That's called a habit. Okay? There is no forgiveness for repetitive sin. That's what Paul tells us. If you don't believe me, go and look at the scriptures. Hebrews, the, uh, what is it? See, y'all done did it to me. Now I got to show. Sorry about that. Hebrews 10, 26. For if we practice sin willfully, repeatedly, over and over again, Having, after having received the accurate knowledge of the truth, after knowing right from wrong, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins left. In other words, see, this sacrifice has no bearing, has no application to us. We cannot ask for forgiveness if we continue to sin. So how many of you out there are continuing to sin? Well, I'm sorry, because... If we practice sin willfully after receiving the accurate knowledge of the truth, right now, this conversation that you're hearing, if you've not heard before this scripture, then as of now, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins left, so long as you continue to do wrong, to sin. That's why repentance is absolutely necessary, and repentance is turning around and heading in the other direction. Well, if you're heading in this direction, meaning sinning, then that means you have to turn around and head in the opposite direction. You cannot go off to the side because that's not repentance. Repentance is not barely sinning. No, repentance is turning around. That's what the word in indicates, turning around and heading in the opposite direction. All right. So, again, this video started off with telling you guys about the videos that are going to be on Bet shoot, and the videos that are on bet shoot, this should be published already. I know we were having a problem. I may have to upload it again, because I think bet shoot probably is mad at me because I put it up there and won't put it up there for YouTube. But that's the way it is. It's published. Okay, the benefits of staying till no, that's the benefits of staying to the end. Okay, the power under the Federal Reserve Act. Your power under the Federal Reserve Act. That's the one. Okay. That's the one you're going to click on. Right there. Right that, that, there, there. Okay? This is for bit shoot only. Okay? There you go. See, that's what he said. It's for bit shoot only. Just need to make sure y'all understand. All right. Bit shoot doesn't... Well, bit shoot will get this video too. But, you know, it's just the way it is. Okay? All right. Got to go. Y'all take care. Thank you for letting me have this conversation. I really did need to have this conversation today because I feel good. I feel good all over. You just don't know. It's been a very good day.
and I've enjoyed the conversation, believe it or not. Have a good day, everyone. 55 minutes. Gotta go.